guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen with Hooked for Hope. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna go over the top selling things that you can crochet for fall and winter 2020. When I mean by sell, I mean by selling through an event such as a holiday craft fair, a Christmas craft fair, a Christmas bazaar, a holiday bazaar, a just general craft fair. There are many different terms, many different ways of calling these events, uh, different names, but in general, they're holiday events, holiday craft fairs. Holiday craft fairs are actually a really big deal. There are a lot of crafters that will spend all year round focusing on building up enough inventory for an event. Why would they do that? Well, it's during the holiday season that people become very aware that they need to start paying attention to gift ideas, um, making sure they have a gift for that special someone. And that means during the holiday season that the pressure to spend money, the pressure to buy things has increased significantly which means for you that the probability and ability to sell something that you made has also increased significantly as well. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I release two brand new videos every single week covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects. You're not going to want to miss out. Okay, so this is where I think a lot of people really miss the mark with holiday shows, a lot of vendors. People are going out looking for those stocking stuffers. They're looking for that special gift. They're definitely looking to buy something. They want to buy something because they feel that pressure of, oh, I need to get this person a gift. I need to get this person a gift. Oh gosh, I need to buy something. But what people are going to holiday fairs, holiday craft fairs looking for is something that'll spark an emotion. They're going to the holiday craft fair looking for something that's original, something that's different, something that's new, something that they can't find in a store. And they're hoping that there is something on your table that will spark an emotion in them or help them to feel a connection to somebody they know that will be the perfect gift for that somebody. So if you have made a bunch of things, like you've been working all year long and you have made a bunch of amazing things and you've spent a lot of money on materials and maybe you've actually built up a lot of inventory making the exact same something but a lot of it in anticipation for this event the problem is is that if the things that you have made have zero connection with somebody they don't spark any emotion then you're not gonna sell anything or that person's just not gonna buy anything for example, I have a story. Last Christmas, I did go to a few events. There was one event in particular where it was a two building event full of vendors, just packed with vendors. And all these vendors had made handmade things. And there are some beautiful things on these tables. But the only thing I actually considered buying at this Christmas bazaar was a pillow that had the word Fortnite written across it. Because I knew that my son loves Fortnite it sparked an emotion in me. I made a connection with somebody that I love and I was like, oh, this will make this person so happy. I can't wait to give them this gift. So it made a connection with me. It again, sparked an emotion in me that I wanted to get this pillow for my son because I knew it would make him happy. That's the only thing I considered buying at this entire event. Full of amazing things, handmade things, but all I thought about actually considered buying was a pillow that said Fortnite on it. Perspective. That's what I'm talking about. Don't just make things just to make things. Make things that actually will have some connection with someone. So make things that will actually spark an emotion in somebody. But how do you do that? What, what do you make that will spark emotion in people? Well, first of all, remember what time of year this is. It's a holiday bazaar. So a quarter of the things on your table, uh, no more than half of your table should actually have holiday related things on it. Okay. So just put that into perspective. The holiday related things will lure people to your table. They'll be like, oh, it's a Christmas bazaar or a holiday bazaar. And I see holiday things on this person's table. I want to check that out. Okay. That's your hook. You're going to definitely want to have some holiday things on your table. Now, holiday bazaars range anywhere from October through December. So you might actually be at an event in October and you might want to have Halloween things on your table or in November where you might want to have Thanksgiving things on your table. So again, take into consideration what holiday is right next to you. Also remember what holiday people are really focused on. And usually those are the December holidays and make sure that there are going to be some holiday related things on your table, at least 
a quarter, at most a half of your table. Okay. The other half of your table needs to be other things, non-holiday related, that will again spark an emotion in people. It'll be something that people could be into, interested in. And I'm going to go more into those items as I talk about which popular categories that you can focus on, really zero in on for your booth. There are actually six different categories that I plan on going over with you, different categories of things that you can really focus on that will sell great on your table. Uh, there is a seventh category that I will talk about, but it's really just a bunch of sub categories that you can easily incorporate into your table. They're like little things that we can talk about. I will also include in the note section timestamps. So if you are focused on specific categories, you can just fast forward straight to that category and listen to what I suggest for you to make. Also, I will include timestamps right here for you. Just a quick visual if you want to write that down. And again, fast forward straight to what you are most interested in watching. Sound good? All right. Let's go ahead and dive straight into category number one. The first category of best-selling things that I have sold at Christmas bazaars, holiday bazaars, are beanies. Beanies are a huge seller for me, and they are one of those things that I can't seem to ever make enough of. And I think the biggest reason for that are the sizes. There are so many different sizes that you can make. Again, zero to three months, three to six months, six to nine months, nine to 12 months, the toddler sizes, the child sizes, and then the teen and adult sizes. So what I end up doing is I end up making a couple of each type of beanie that I make, each themed beanie that I make, and then I'll end up taking a lot of orders. Oh, you want this beanie in this size? All right, let me get your information. I'll make that and I will mail it to you or I'll schedule a time to meet up for us to get that to you. Yeah, so beanies, themed beanies are my biggest seller. I think the biggest sellers for me are my aviator beanie, which I have a tutorial for already on my YouTube channel, but I will try to hook you up with making this aviator beanie in multiple different sizes. That's a goal of mine. Uh, the unicorn beanie, oh my gosh. The unicorn beanie was one of those beanies that because it takes me so long to make, I do increase the price of it. People don't even care. It's a gift for somebody that they love. It has formed that spark, that connection. They're like, my little girl will love that. It'll put the biggest smile on her face. Just ring it up for me, please. Uh, the shark beanie, I don't have one out right now. I tried to put everything on my table that sells well for me, but unfortunately I just ran out of time. But I wanted to mention the shark beanie, great. Uh, the owl beanie is a great seller. Monster beanies, dinosaur beanies, they're all just fantastic. Themed beanies, uh, more things that I don't even, haven't even recommended. As long as it's themed, it's going to be a connection former. That's the big thing. Again, we're trying to spark that connection with someone. What could somebody possibly be into? If you need ideas, uh, you can go to your local Walmart, Target, just clothing store like JCPenney, Sears, uh, go into their kids section. Doesn't have to necessarily be the baby section, but go into the kids section and you will instantly see a popular theme that seems to be resonating in the area and just go with that theme. A, a big tip for you, it should be helpful. So beanies, my page beanie, which I also have a tutorial for, was a huge seller for me for teenagers and adults. They loved the detail. They loved the pattern on the beanie. It instantly sparked a connection with them where they just wanted to wear it. Uh, my neutrals sold the best. So the black, the white, the cream, the gray, the taupe, the um, just the gray tones, the brown tones, um, those sold great. They were the quickest first sellers for me on those. And then if you live near a local sports team, use the colors of that sports team. That will sell great for you. That's a big tip for you as well, okay? Whatever you do, please, please, please do not just make a plain beanie and put it on your table because a plain beanie has no personal connection. Uh, there's nothing about that plain beanie that is going to spark an interest in somebody um, unless they think to themselves, oh my gosh, so-and-so used to make beanies just like that, but that's going to be very far and in between. You might be able to sell a couple plain beanies, but in general, from what I have seen, a plain beanie is not going to sell. So please, please, please don't just make a plain beanie. You might as well go the extra mile and add something to that beanie that will put it over the top, help form that connection and become an actual good selling object on your table. Okay, 
Category number two is going to be baby stuff. So crochet and baby stuff just seems to go hand in hand. People just seem to think I have a baby to buy for, where's the crochet table? <laughs> like that, that seems to be a pretty good like hand in hand thing. So on your table, you might definitely wanna have some baby stuff. It sells great. So along with the baby beanies, cause again, the beanies can also be toddler, child. You can even make a lot of these beanies in adult sizes. But when we're talking about baby stuff, Beanies do great. Also think of toys. And when I'm talking toys, I mean stuffed animals. Stuffed animals are gonna be super popular. The little teddy bear, the little popular themes. Um, and I'll go more into the themes when I talk about toys baby, uh, in the kids section, but think about their themes, okay? Uh, rattles are fantastic to make. Uh, loveys, loveys are very sweet. Textured books are super popular right now. I have not actually made loveys or textured books to put on my table yet, though their popularity is skyrocketing. I'm seeing them ma being made in multiple different ways in multiple different forms. So if you go that route, I highly believe that those are gonna be great sellers for you. Doing the lovey and a theme, again, form that connection and the textured book. You can make blankets. You can absolutely make baby blankets. Some people are super into that's what they wanna make. I do have a disclaimer for you. I want you to be cautious when making blankets. If you are going to spend all year long making a bunch of baby blankets with the intention of selling them, and that's primarily all that's going to be on your table, make sure that you seek out, research the right events to be at. You don't wanna to go to an event that is more for a, an older crowd. You wanna make sure that the event is aiming towards young families. That is going to be the biggest help for you when selling blankets. Also, if you're gonna sell blankets, watch the baby themes. If you make your baby blanket in a baby theme that's popular this year, or if you make a baby blanket in colors that are popular this year. Again, if you need tips on what's popular this year, just go to your local store, your Walmart Target or clothing store, see what they have mostly in the baby section and then try to focus on those colors and those themes and you'll do great, okay? That'll really help people form that connection and wanna buy that blanket. Do not, do not just make a blanket to make a blanket and think to yourself, I could sell that. Just don't do that. <laughs> it's not gonna end well. <laughs> okay, category number three is kid stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna say with kid stuff is again, beanies. Taking into consideration the time of year it is, generally it, during the holiday season, it is cold outside for most of us, not for all of us. For example, Texas, we're still warm in December. It isn't until January, February, March that we start to get freezing cold. But take into consideration, this is the time of year it is. Beanies are great. Uh, the, the other popular, popular thing that you can make for kids is the toys, the stuffed animals. But I want to be cautious when saying stuffed animals because watch how much time and how much materials it takes for you to make that stuffed animal. Uh, if you're spending tons of time making the stuffed animal, tons of materials, and after adding up how much you should charge for that stuffed animal, if you're making something this big and you're charging 20 to $30 for it, most likely people aren't gonna buy it. So you gotta be smart when it comes to stuffed animals. When it comes to stuffed animals, make sure that you're going with themes, uh, definitely themes that people can be connected with. Like, oh, they're super into this. Oh, they're super into that. So go with the popular themes for that year. Again, what you can do is you can look at the store, finding the popular theme for that year. But most particular for 2020, our popular themes are the unicorn is still number one. So making even this little tiny ball with a little horn and some colorful hair, little legs. I mean, super simple, but it's a unicorn and it's instantly made a connection with anyone who's obsessed with unicorns, okay? Uh, the narwhal is also super popular. It's the whale with that horn sticking out of its head. Uh, owls, llamas, alpacas, foxes, sloths, the cat, the dog, still popular stuffed animals. You can make the simple teddy bear. Teddy bears are still really popular. People love to cuddle a teddy bear. Um, go with the dinosaurs, the sharks for boys. Super popular. Make baby shark. Uh, again, I'm, I promise you I'm not going to sing the song. All of you parents out there that have gone nuts from hearing this song repeated over and over, I promise you I'm not going to sing the song. But Baby Shark is popular because he has formed a connection with people. Kids will instantly just be overjoyed. They love Baby Shark. I apologize to all you parents. <laughs> 
uh, jungle animals, such as the monkey. You'll do great with African animals, such as the elephant, the giraffe, the lion. Those are going to be really fun, really great, popular sellers for me. Uh, another big stuffed animal that I plan on making a lot of is the hippopotamus. So this year, or sorry, last year, my kids came home from school singing this song, I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. I had never heard of this song until last year, though it sounds like one of those really old songs made in the 50s, but it goes, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And I instantly thought that is a great marketing tactic technique, tactic that I could use. I could make a bunch of hippopotamus st stuffed animals. They're super easy to make. Play that song in the background of my booth. And as people are walking by, they're going to be triggered by this song. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And they're like, I want, someone wants a hippopotamus. Does this person that I need to buy for want a hippopotamus? Would they like a hippopotamus? I think I need to buy a hippopotamus. <laughs> So check that out. That is definitely one that I'm going to be stocking up on for sure. And again, I haven't tried this yet, though I have no idea why it wouldn't work out. Stuffed animals, great hit. Song, great hit. Makes a connection with somebody. It checks off all of the boxes. So that's a great idea. Also, you could make stuffed animals that are characters. These are going to be great hooks and grabbers also. Like I have mentioned in a few of my videos before, what you might see on my table, somebody, again, will be obsessed with a certain character, a certain theme, and that's going to be an instant seller. Instant seller. Category number four is home-based items. There are going to be some people that come to this event and they have no interest in buying things for babies or buying things for kids. They're really there for themselves. They're looking for the handmade item that they can use around their house that will help give their house that themed look that they're looking for and they are hoping that they can find it on your table. For example, there have been multiple different occasions where I've had people come straight up to my booth and ask me, do you have scrubbies? And I will say, yes, I do. <laughs> I will always have scrubbies on my table because there are going to always be those people that come to an event looking for handmade scrubbies because that's the only place they can buy these things. I mean, does that make sense? So the scrubbies, the washcloths, the pot holders, all great to have on hand. Uh, also the towel toppers, themed or not, the coffee cozies or cup cozies themed or not. Uh, you, you can do the pillows are great. Coasters are great. Coasters like the cat butt coasters. They instantly spark an emotion in people. There are multiple different coasters that you can play with, make, and they'll be great, especially if you sell them in a pack. That'll be awesome too. Uh, themes to stick with if you're going to do the home-based crochet items. Stick with the farmhouse theme, the rustic farmhouse look. That seems to be consistently popular right now. A uh, beach house is very calming and a lot of people go with that theme. That's also another very popular theme. But if all else, just stick with the neutrals. Neutrals are gonna be safe colors to make all of these items in. Category five is possibly the most important category that you could look at to put on your table. And that is the smalls. The smalls are going to be so, so important because they will hit the other end of the spectrum. There's going to be some people coming to the event ready to buy stuff. They have person one, person two, person three. They have a mission here at the event. They need to buy these three people a gift. So guys, we got these three people to buy for. Go look for something that is going to make a connection with one of these three people. Then there are also going to be these other people coming to the event that have no intention of spending any money at the event. They really just want to come to the event looking to see what people have made, what new home crochet or what new homemade items, handmade items are people putting on their table this year. They're looking for inspiration. They're looking for reasons to be crafty, whether if they're crafty themselves or they're not crafty themselves, but they still enjoy looking at and seeing what other people make. So if you have items on your table that are really small, they you made them really fast, they don't take up much material at all, and you can charge really little for them, like dollar, two dollar, three dollar items, you know, anything under five bucks, those are going to be great, especially if they come on your come upon your table and they see something and they're like, oh, I want to buy something but I didn't bring any money or I didn't bring very much money and it gives them that satisfaction of buying at least something from the event or if it's a kid that really wants to buy something for their brother or sister 
uh, these are going to be great items to have for the kid to, to gift or stocking stuffers. That's going to be fantastic. So examples of some of these things that are small are keychains. What's great about keychains is they're small and you can make so many different types of keychains. Keychains have the ability to really form connections with people. You can just really have a lot of fun with just making some kind of tiny little stuffed animal and throwing a keychain on there and somebody's going to be thrilled about that keychain. Uh, other options would be the gift card holders. So some people just want gift cards. This is going to be a new item for me. I've seen so many different types of gift card holders on Pinterest that I'm really excited to make because they're small, they're fast, and they can be so cute and form that connection that we're talking about. Small stuffed animals. Again, like I talked about in my last video of spring and summer things that you could sell, uh, just a tiny ball with eyes on it or even no eyes, just making a tiny ball and some they just want to throw it around and play with it. It's amazing how entertained a child can be over something so simple. <laughs> but you know, you make just this tiny little thing, throw a dollar on it, be like, here, this that's how much it is and they're gone. They're just gone. <laughs> it's great. So, but, and it makes them happy too. Bookmarks are also a fantastic quick thing that you can do and you can make them look really cute either with color tones or I've seen a lot of really fun bookmarks with a flower on the end or that look like characters that have been squished or <laughs> again there's so many different ideas that you can make right there but what's great about the smallest guys is that it makes it really easy for you to make a bunch of them because they make up so quick and it makes it really easy for people to buy them because they're so cheap and they can quickly do like, okay, I can get this, this, and this, and this, this. That's a great stocking stuffer, or that'll make a really cute gift for a coworker, or this will be really simple to give to so-and-so. Okay, so category one through five are really my most popular selling categories at a Christmas bazaar or holiday bazaar that are not holiday related. The sixth category that I'm going to talk about are the holiday related themes. So in this category, the first would be the tiny stuffed animals, just making some small stuffy that is associated with that holiday. So if you're in October and you wanna do a small stuffed animal that's Halloween related, or November and you wanna do something Thanksgiving related, or even December and you wanna do a tiny stuffy that is holiday related. For example, I made these little guys. These are my pattern that I created, but they sold really, really well. They did a they were really, really cute. So just something super, super simple that could make up really fast and be themed. Something that people are instantly associating a holiday to and it's a hook. It draw, draws their attention into your booth. Another item that I made was the reindeer candy cane little guy. I plan on making this tutorial really soon because I could not keep him on my table. I would make up a bunch for an event. It would be a two day event. And the first day I would sell out of these guys. So then I would frantically go home and try to make up as many as I could for the next, next day. And I would end up selling out within the first hour or two of that event, that day also. The, what's great about this guy is he's so small, but he's also so cute and so theme related. So I had on Saturday, I had a little boy come up to my table and he bought five of these because he wanted to get one for everyone in his family. And I thought that was so cute. And then again, it's an easy gift for a family member to get to give to somebody or for you to give a coworker or a teacher or just, it's a really simple gift. It's small, it's fast and it's holiday related. So I definitely plan on making a tutorial on him pretty soon for you. The Christmas beanie. So if you wanted to do the notorious, the really long beanie, those are a lot of fun. Those are super themed. Also, like I got the reindeer beanie. He's super cute. Uh, Christmas tree ornaments are a lot of fun because they're small and they make up pretty quickly, uh, depending on what you're making. If you're making like the globe one, that takes a little bit more time. If you're making the little star, that's super simple. Uh, but those can be really cute, really great to have on hand. Again, you're forming that connection with people. The towel toppers, the shelf sitters, again, uh, anything decorated, dec any kind of decor item that you could make that is themed for like an elf or Santa Claus or a reindeer. That's a lot of fun. Um, any kind of little small stocking stuffers. Again, you could even make a little sign that says stocking stuffers and that 
instantly takes out a lot of work for people because they'll be like, oh, there's a sign, stocky stuffers. I'm going to zone in on this area and I'm gonna buy a bunch of stuff because I know I need to buy stocking stuffers. Make sense? Again, we're, we're instantly trying to form that spark of inspiration. <laughs> I got something for you, making it as simple as I possibly can and focus your attention here. It would be great. Um, and then a wreath. If you wanna make either a holiday themed wreath that is beautiful or you can make a candy wreath that is super fun all right so that is the six different categories that were specific categories that you could really hone in on uh, the seventh category are just the small ones so categories you can put on your table would be the spa collection that I've talked about before if you need to buy something for somebody but you really don't know them that well but you still want to get them something special the spa collection is great because it will make them feel special it will make them feel feel thought about, but yet it's super easy to make, super small for you to put on your table. And it's an instant connection that somebody can have when they don't really have a connection with that person. They can instantly be like, oh, the spa collection. Oh, uh, this person might like that. That that makes them, it'll make them feel special that I got them. That. The teacher uh, category. So you could have some things on your table um, for a teacher gift, such as the, the pencil stuffed toy or the pencil holder, or there are a couple really fun ideas. You could even do like some plants, some crocheted plants that you could give to teacher. Uh, that is great because there are going to be a lot of parents that need to find that small little something they can give as a teacher gift just to show appreciation. You'd be surprised how many of us are looking for teacher gifts. Another category is totes and bags. I, you can either specialize in this category or have a couple or choose not to do this category at all. That's up to you. But bags like totes or market bags, th those can be a great thing to have as one of your categories that you're going to put on your table. And then wearables, your scarves, your cowls, your fingerless gloves, your gloves, your leg warmers, your boot cuffs, the boot toppers, um, shawls, wraps, sweaters, if you want to go that route. Again, it's just whatever you feel comfortable making. People love that stuff, absolutely. Uh, make sure you stick with your neutrals. I'm just going to be safe and say stick with your neutrals or stay with popular color colors that you find in your local store. Okay. Don't do, don't make anything just because the yarn was cheap. Don't make anything because that's just what you had. And so you just chose to use that to make something you want to sell. Be very careful. Okay. If you want to sell things, if your mission is to sell things, then go with popular themes that have all people have already done research on. People have already done the questionnaires, the surveys. They've put a lot of time and effort into finding what people are interested in. So use that to your advantage and go with the flow of that. Okay. You'll sell best if you do that. But those are your main categories. Now here's what I suggest for you. I just threw a whole lot of ideas at you. I threw a whole lot of information at you. What you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna pick three categories. Try This year, just focus on three categories. Focus on building up as much inventory as you can with items from these three categories. Uh, if it's your first year, I would definitely suggest that one of those categories be small, so that way you can quickly make up a bunch of stuff and they just, it seems to have the most success. But um, yeah, stick with three categories this year, build up a ton of inventory, because something that I struggle with personally, this is my big struggle, is I just want to make everything. <laughs> I just want to make it all. I love crocheting. I love the beauty of everything that you can make. And I end up trying to make everything but then I only end up making a couple things of everything and those things will end up selling out really fast and then it's gone. And then I'm limited to this stuff and then that'll sell out and it's gone. I'm limited to this stuff. And I don't make enough of popular sellers because I'm trying to make it all. And I end up costing myself money because consistent thing that I seem to find is if I would have had more, I would have made more money. So if you can focus on three categories and just work your butt off on building up as much inventory as you can on those three categories, then you'll be in a much better situation, a much better boat and being able to sell these things than I am where I try to make everything and I only make a little bit. Watch your quality of your work. Try to do the best you can. Watch the quality of your materials. Remember you're selling these things. So try to bring forth your 
your best face, bring forth your best materials that are going to work great for this stuff. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to put together a playlist on my YouTube channel that I'm going to call Sellable Crochets and every tutorial that I make that I think would sell well, I'm going to attach it to that playlist. I unfortunately feel like I'm going to end up running out of time to do everything that I want to do for you before this Christmas, but I'm going to keep making tutorials even after Christmas is over and I'm going to build up that sellable crochet items tutorial list even after this Christmas. That way next Christmas we have a stocked playlist full of great ideas that you can just pick through and go. And that is my goal. That is what I'm really going to try to do is help you out with that. I just know that I'm going to end up running out of time, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. What I can also do for you, what I have also done for you is check out my Pinterest boards. I've already created Pinterest boards for specific categories. Like I have a smalls. Pinterest board and I have a uh, baby themes Pinterest board and a kids toys Pinterest board and a home crochet Pinterest board and I have all these specific boards for specific categories where if you focus you want to zero in on a specific category you can just go straight to that board for more inspiration more ideas just hopefully it inspires you and makes it a lot easier for you to figure out what to make instead of struggling with what you could possibly make sound good Okay, well, thank you so much for spending time with me. I really hope that I was helpful and that this video inspired you to make certain things and get started and get going and start making a bunch of things. I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.